saying you don't have a voice. There are still a lot of things that the city council can do. Like I can work with Roxanne and the emergency manager is not going to affect that. And so um, don't give up on us. And as public servants, we're still trying to work for you and with you. So please don't downplay that. And so I just appreciate my time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilperson Galloway. Councilman Neely. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. You know, as, as a city council person and also a resident of the city of Flint, you know, it's, it's very frustrating to, to watch and witness some of the things that we just saw here today with the emergency manager. But one thing that we can do as elected officials still in our capacity is to educate you, even though our role has been limited. Um, to you, Ms. Uh, Abrams, Roxanne Abrams, in regards to your chicken dip, there's no rule set that we can just arbitrarily uh, abolish a particular ordinances or ordinances that are set in place. We just can't do that. But I will put it on our legislative committee uh, agenda for in a couple of weeks. We will discuss it to revisit that, and we will uh, try to rework it to where we can have a good common um, goal to be able to have other type of domestic pets if it's their chicken. So we will do that, and, and I think our committee meeting is set for two weeks from now. And so I would like to have that on our, uh, on our agenda for discussion items. Mrs. Linda Bell, I'm not for sure if she left uh, this. this uh, you still here? Uh, make sure you give me one of those packages, and I will get it to the Economic Development Committee uh, for the City of Flint. I, I sit on that. I vice chair that, so I will take that package, and we'll see what we can do to help uh, those people with uh, disabilities to where they cannot uh, hear, so we can do some signing inside the City of Flint. And also, Mr. Chester, I forgot I didn't get your last name, but I think everything that you said here was pretty accurate. Um, three emergency managers. Three emergency managers the city have seen more taxes, more fees, more assessments, lost assets, less police officers, less firefighters. The rape of this community is almost complete. They have taken everything from this community with this exercise, Mr. Early's words, mm -hmm. of emergency management. They said they were coming to this community to help us. They've taken our police officers away from us. They've taken our firefighters away from us. And even now, they're taking our chickens away from us. Uh, and I know we have a lot of misdirected hostility here in this, in this room. People are upset, and they vent to us, the city council. But I was one of the city councilmen that voted not to surrender our power to the emergency manager. But it's going to take all of us together to push this this foreign occupation out of our community before we lose even more. He just put a budget in place without our input. He got input from us, he wiped our input off, and then said, without even a vote, I'm going to put this two-year budget into place. Had we had opportunity to vote on it, I would have voted no. But we did not get a chance to vote. What we saw there, with this guy coming here, forcing a budget up on this community, not staying to hear your comments, and walking right out, probably on his way back to Lansing right now, was a serious disrespect to this community. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the city, the, Governor Snyder has just signed over an additional $100 million to the aid of Detroit through their emergency management. All we need here is about $10 million. It's ridiculous in which uh, this process is going through with this whole exercise from Detroit to City of Flint to Pontiac to Highland Park to Ecorse, uh, all the cities that's been affected by this emergency management. Uh, this is a, a robbery of democracy. But, but what you need to do is Speak to your clergy members, speak to your pastors, speak to your educators, speak to everybody that you can so we can unite under one common goal to remove this emergency manager from our city before it's too late, before everything is gone, so we can reverse some of these things that's happened tonight. Thank you for your time, and I hope I did educate you a little bit. Thank you, Councilman Neely, Councilman Davis. You know, it gets real hard when you look at this emergency manager and see that he has no respect for the community and he has no respect for, for, for elected officials. 
That is the reason why I wrote the letter to the United States Attorney General, because I want the feds to get involved in what we got going on. I really do. And I'm going to send that same letter, which I re-edited a little bit so that it can be proper grammar in it for some people that were saying that it wasn't grammar. But however, I'm going to send that same letter every week and certify it. And I'm going to flood the, the, the what is it, Department of Justice. I'm going to flood their office with that same letter because if we can get these people in here, we can save our city. This emergency manager is here. He has not done anything but stripped us of our assets. He has not resolved any of the finances that we have going on. And really, to be honest with you, the finances that we got going on right now could be easily resolved. I really believe it can. And I'm going to give you a little education. The county never had a backup system. Every municipality is supposed to have a backup system when you're dealing with water. The county has been using our Dort and Stewart water plant for many years and has never paid us what they owe us. If we get that money from the county, what they owe us. Now, you have to do your research yourself because I did a little of my research. And from my understanding is that they owe us $2 million per year. And they have not paid us but only $1 million in 2012. And you can go back so many years and retrieve. Some people say 17, some say 6. But if we go back 6, that's $12 million. If we go back 17, that's 34. Take one out, it's 33. If we would enforce that on them and tell them to give us the money that they owe us, we can lower these water rates. Because that money will go back to the water and sewer. That's something that is not being told to us. But I'm telling you that because I love exposing them. I really do. I love exposing them because when we have knowledge, we move in a great form and we move with force. But if we move in with force on ignorance and don't know anything, then they look at it and say, well, they're fruitless. But I'm going to allow us to be fruitless, fruitful, because we need to be fruitful. Mm -hmm. This budget that he conducted, I don't believe in it. I would have said no to it myself. There's no way that I would have put my name on something that's going to raise water rates, cut police, and cut fire. There's no way I was going to do that. I would have said no because this is nothing but a great form of genocide. It's taking our city far and under. And when he leaves, we won't have anything. And they're being real hasty in doing it because they don't know if Snyder is going to win. So we have to be very careful and we have to move together as a unit on one accord because that's what a leader is. A leader is one who organizes, and I would love for each and every one of you to stand behind me because I move straight head forth. I don't care if my life is on the line or not because at the end of the day, they will say that this man moved with principle and he had courage and he tried to make a difference. Every leader that we ever had from Martin Luther King and everybody else put their life on the line and they didn't care. But I would do that if I have to do that. Because at the end of the day, I think money is being misappropriated. I think money is not placed in the right way it should be approached. Because if this millage was exercised in the way that you're paying your $79 a year on your property taxes, if that millage was used right, we wouldn't be talking about laying off public safety. And I think it's a great form of disrespect. And I think it's, a, it's, just, it's just wrong for them to put that on the backs of the people and allow our lives to just trickle away as if we ain't worth nothing. But you will sit at and circle around a dog that's being killed, and you will sit around there and put more value on that. And I love animals too, but we got humans dying every day. Yeah. Every day. And this man got up and walked out of here and he said, thank us for being together with him. No, I'm not together with you. I ain't never going to be together with him. I don't believe in Public Act 436. I don't believe in emergency manager. I believe in democracy. I believe in respect. And I do not believe in disenfranchising any of y'all. And Miss Valerie, I will be there for you. If you ever call me, you can. I will be there for you. You can call me. We can sit down and talk. And if we can move together with the emotions that we have, if we can put it in something positive and move together, we can make a difference. I bet you we will. Or I will try doing it. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Councilman Freeman? Yeah, I've got uh, just a couple of things. Um, Concerning the $200 million that Detroit got from, um, from the state of Michigan through their bankruptcy process, I think what's also important to note is that every one of our uh, state representatives and uh, senators uh, voted for that. And, uh, you know, it was all right to give Detroit $200 million, but we got table scraps, and, and, um, and I'm not unthankful for the $1.1 million that we got. But if it was me up there, 
I wouldn't have been voting for $200 million for Detroit until we got a, a, a better deal or a, um, a, 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 a There's, Let me please. know when you're done. Please. So I, if it was me, I wouldn't have voted for that $200 million in Detroit and only a million dollars for the city of Flint because um, we've got issues here too. Um, chicken issue, I'm in support of chickens. My mom's probably got 25 chickens. They've done wonders for her garden out there. Um, she doesn't have the bugs out there that um, she used to have. Uh, and I actually supported the ordinance in 2010 uh, when it was before us in committee. Um, so I would ask that maybe we discuss that specific ordinance in, in legislative as we move forward. And Mr. Whiteside, I think it was, who's over on um, Kentucky, um, you're probably right. You haven't seen me in the last four and a half years because I just started representing your area um, in um, uh, through, redist through, through redistricting. Well, you said you've got all these people that you're talking to, so maybe you can convey that to them um, in your talks. Um, what, I, what I would also suggest is that there's a neighborhood group over in that area that meets once a month um, over at Asbury United Methodist Church. Uh, they meet at 6 o'clock. It's the third Thursday of the month, and you might want to get involved in that neighborhood group that, that's working in your neighborhood. Um, and if you need to get a hold of me, my personal cell phone number, because I think I may be the only person up here that doesn't uh, have a city cell phone. I pay for my own cell phone bill. It's 397-3797. And I can be reached there uh, through text or through call. You can also email me at jfreeman at cityofflint.com. I also work in that neighborhood. Um, I'm there every day, Monday through Friday, from uh, 7.30 in the morning until 5.30 at night. And every other Saturday from 8 until 2. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty accessible. But you've got my phone number. You've got my um, email address. Uh, I'm there. So uh, 810 Three nine seven, thirty seven ninety seven. It's a full house. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Freeman. Councilman Nolden. Um, yeah, just a few things. Um, as it relates to um, the, the dog situation at Burston, um, we've had softball at Burston for twenty some odd years, and it's one of the real wholesome things that we have on the north side of Flint. Since we started the softball league back this, um, this spring or this, this summer, um, the last four weeks, well, the last three weeks, we've had problems with the teenagers coming down there. Yeah. I mean, the teenagers, we, we have older folks and we have teams coming from our county that come down there and play. But these teenagers between the ages of about, say, 13, 14, about 19, they are using social media and talking about fighting and coming to Burston to do it. So for the last two weeks, we've had police officers stationed there. Now, as it relates to what happened with the dog on yesterday, um, and, and I'm, I'm the volunteer-like director at Burston, and my colleague was there as well. The young lady must have been about 14, 15 years of age. This dog was a pit bull on steroids. This dog must have weighed 115, 120 pounds. The little girl could not handle the dog. She could not hold that dog. And I even talked to her prior to, because we might have had 1,500 folks or more down the Burston. Yeah. And it probably was more than that. And she's walking along the back entrance behind the back of it, and that's where everybody's at. And they have vendors there because it's real festive. People are tailgating and all. And she's walking the dog through there, and this dog is walking her. So I had mentioned to the young lady, I said, you know, baby, you really might not should have that dog down here. There's too many people here trying to be nice. So we have an officer that came there about 5.30 or so, and he was there to help us to patrol or keep the peace because these teenagers are running all of the folks that have been coming to Burston all these years. They're running them away. We got seniors that come down there every Sunday, and they are now leaving because these teenagers these parents are letting them just come down there or they don't know where they're at and they're bringing all of this stuff from the neighborhood or from Facebook and Twitter. They're bringing that to Burston. So what happened is the dog got away from the little girl. The dog bit a child. Everybody is running trying to get away from this dog. This dog was, this dog was humongous. Now they said the dog was friendly. I walked past the dog a couple of times. He might have been friendly right then, 
But with all those people in there, he bit the child, and as, as, he's, as the people starting to run because his dog is loose, the officer had to do what he had to do. And the officer shot the dog twice. So when, I think twice. Now, I'm an animal, I'm an animal lover, and I've raised pit bulls for 20 some odd years. My dog passed away about three, four years ago, so that's the only reason why I don't have one now. But, um, you know, really, the young lady shouldn't have had that dog down with all those folks there. And anybody that was there would tell you this, this dog was humongous. It could have been a friendly dog, yes, but if you had seen this dog, you would have been physically scared of this animal because it was just that big. The dog head had to be 20, 22, 23 inches wide. I mean, this dog was huge. But um, that's one of the problems that we're having down at Burston. You know, we're not going to let these teens disrupt something that we've been doing for 20 some odd years. And yes, we have had a police officer down there, and that's the only reason why we haven't had any problems, because for the last two weeks prior to yesterday and the dog situation, we had girls, and it's, it's the young ladies, it's not even the boys. It's the young ladies that are fighting down there. We've arrested girls two weeks in a row for fighting down there. As a matter of fact, last week when they were fighting, these girls got off the city bus at about, at about six, 40, 650 or whatever, they walked to a certain area and these other girls came there and they started fighting because they're on Facebook, Twitter, doing it. But I just wanted to kind of talk about that and let you guys know what happened because, you know, we have a nice time down there. It's just that these kids, we got to do something about them. And these parents, it's their responsibility to make sure their kids are doing what they need to do. Thank you, Councilman Nolan. Councilperson Poplar. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, Mr. Antonio Brown, will you meet me at the mic? I have a presentation for your boss. He isn't here, Jerry Ambrose, but I want you, this is from a constituent, and there is a presentation. Thank you. Antonio, I know that, um, first of all, I want to appreciate you and thank you for staying this evening. All of the other elected, not elected officials, but appointees, they left. But you stayed, you heard what the constituents of this city wanted to say. And I want to thank you for that. But I have a constituent, and it broke my heart because I've been with this woman since 2005. She's 89 years old. And she's walking away from her home. Well, she has walked away. I was there on her last day. She can't pay her water bills anymore. She heard the water was going up. And she says, Ms. Poplar, I know you're not raising my bill. She said, but I've enjoyed my home, and I've enjoyed what you've done for me since 2005. She says, but what's killing me is I got to give my dog up, my dog that I've had for 12 years. She sent him out of town. As we were leaving, she said, I have one last thing for the emergency manager and for the finance manager. I said, the finance manager. I begged him time and time again not to raise these water bills because I'm paying the same thing you are. 89 years old, she's now living in a senior citizen building without the only thing that she has left that she loved was her dog. So you know what? She sent, she sent Mr. Jerry Amber. It's a bag of dog food, and you tell your boss to enjoy this dinner. Because he's the only dog I know that deserves this bag of dog food.
Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Poplar. Yeah. Councilman Mays. Excuse me. I'm not asking. I'm telling you. Excuse me. Councilman Mays. Councilman Mays. All right, good evening to everyone who was here. I communicated already with most of the people. I was hoping that you would get that on the legislative agenda, and we've got that done. Ms. Bell, glad to see you here. We've been talking for weeks. Economic development jobs. That app can be funded. To the young lady that's leaving that said to me where I live, in fact, I live at 125 East Russell. I've said publicly whether my water been off, whether my electricity is on, to my president of Local 598. We worked for General Motors for 31 years. There's a book. Ma'am, one more out first. I'm sorry. You can leave. There's a book in the Bible called the Book of Job. And once Job had faith in God, whether his riches, I've had Cadillacs, there go the president of my local, local 598. How you doing, Mr. President? We worked on the line together. Now he's in office, I'm in office, and it's been happening. I believe God is in the middle of this whole thing. Somewhere in the book of Job, it was restoration. It's not important whether or not I'm known to be poor at this time. It's not important whether or not I took a buyout from GM when I should have stayed and maybe have been the chairman now and making plenty of money. I worked for GM for 31 years. We make 216 every two weeks. I'm here to tell you I would have do this job for a dollar and still I'm going to live. Whether I live off of a bridge card, my family was pastor made. My mother is Rosie B. Mays. Believe me, I know how to live in the city of Flint. I know people all across the city of Flint. I wanted to address that since she addressed it publicly. When people, poor folks, get their water cut off, I know what they're going through because I've had mine off. I represent the least of them, poor folks. I'm not sitting up here with another job. This is what I do. This was the budget meeting, 52 to $55 million budget. Y'all can hate me, clap, not clap. I'm here to make a record. This budget passed seven to zero. Seven to zero with one abstention, Nolan was gone. The reason I say it passed seven to zero because from April, May, and June, this council had an opportunity to, in my opinion, lower water rates. Ms. Bell put money in the Department of Economic Development. Fund the Detective Bureau, because I've said for 20 or 30 years, the problem ain't so much in the Patrol Bureau. The problem is in the Detective Bureau. File a complaint and see how long it lay there. That's the people in my ward on the corner of Bell Tree and Barbara that we knew who had took that vinyl side. Ask Mr. Willingham, we know who shot him. 3,600 complaints stuck in the detective bureau, laying there, naming people. And people steady buying into all the community forums talking out, tell on somebody. We've been told on them. Pick them up, process the complaints. Undercover officers. Now, I'm for jobs over jails. It's way bigger than jobs. Did you see the farmer's market Saturday? Uptown do what it want to downtown. I'm for people having plants and owning them. First Ward residents, we can do a project where we own a bottled water plant or any plant. If we want a $10 million project, give it to us. I will sum up under the rules, but y'all know I can't stand the emergency manager and can't stand me. I'm down with democracy. But check this out. 
when you got people nine, eight, or whatever, believing that it's the right way to do, soon as I finish that trial on Thursday, see if they shut me up on a Monday because I'll get arrested from my seat and wish that the other eight or nine would get arrested with me. See, when we go up against the emergency manager politically, we'll make national news. But when we conform to the emergency manager, then we get what we get. We get everybody talking about unity, but they treat me like an outcast. I put a proper motion on the floor for them to meet. They won't even talk about it and vote on it. Mr. Mays. Well, please, Mr. Kincaid, please let me up. sum up. Thank you. Thank you. See, it get a little hot and heavy when you tell what you need to tell. I'm way beyond clap. I'm way beyond shouts, and I'm way beyond believing that everybody in Flint gonna like me. 50% gonna like you, 50% gonna jug at you, and it's gonna be a certain percent that just is devilish. Man. They ain't gonna go to heaven hating you. I tell you what, tomorrow we'll be at the Flint Public Library, 5.30. It's a form put on by the NAACP, the concerned pastors is for Woodrow Stanley's seat, the 34th district. And it's a hot race and people all over the place fooling you. And guess what? I hope you be there. God bless you. I know the unions who they with. I know the individuals who they with. And guess what? It's all good. God bless you. Thank you, Councilman Mays. That concludes our meeting for this evening, but I just want to make, make a point. When, when you look at the amount of money through statutory state shared revenue that the state government, Governor Snyder, has taken from the city, it totals more than $54 million in cuts to not just Flint, but to other communities throughout the state, throughout the school districts, that are causing these problems that are made by Governor Snyder and the Republican Party in making sure that urban communities suffer while other communities prosper. So my point to everyone, I don't like the emergency manager. I surely don't like Governor Snyder. And I want to make sure that everyone understands that when November comes, to really make a change, we really need to make a change in our elected leader, well, our elected governor, I don't want to call him a leader, in Lansing. Our next council meeting is July 28th at 5.30. Is there a motion to adjourn? I would make a motion to adjourn. It's been moved and supported.